Hi everyone, and welcome to Joe Reviews. Today I'll be reviewing my Starlink satellite internet. I've been using Starlink for a little over a year, and I've had some good experiences as well as some poor ones, and I'll cover it all in this video. First, I'll briefly go over the setup as there isn't much to it. Upon opening the box, you'll find simple instructions along with the dish, router, stand, power cable for the router, and a cable that runs from the router to the dish. When I first got Starlink, the roof mount option was on back order, so while waiting for that, I temporarily set it up using the provided stand on the ground. I used my phone to check for instructions where I wanted to set the dish. This allowed me to figure out how far away I needed the dish from the house so the dish would have a clear line of sight to the sky and wouldn't be obstructed by the house. It's important to check for obstructions and have a clear line of sight to the sky, otherwise your internet connection will be intermittent. Once I had a spot for the dish, I connected the cable from the dish to the router, then I plugged the router in. After that, you use your phone to check for the Wi-Fi name. Mine came up as Starlink. Once you connect to it, it finishes setting up. The dish will auto position itself in the right direction. Mine was stuck looking straight up at the sky for close to 20 minutes when doing this. I've set mine up a couple of times since then, and it hasn't taken that long to auto position itself, usually a couple minutes at the most. When I first got mine, I didn't have a way to run the cable from outside to inside the house, so I left the router and everything outside for a couple days. The router is IP54 rated, but says configured for indoor use. I was a little nervous leaving the router outside, especially since this was in February and the low at night got below zero degrees Fahrenheit. I never had an issue with that, however, and the internet worked just fine throughout. Eventually, I was able to get the cable ran from outside to indoors. A few months later, the roof mount arrived and I set it up on my roof. I did have a slight issue with the roof mount a couple months after setting it up. The dish tipped over and was laying on its side. Somehow the knob on the side of the mount loosened and the dish tipped. I'm not sure how long it was laying on its side like that because I still had my internet connection and I didn't notice any problems. The only thing I did notice was when I was gaming online, the latency seemed a little high. Upon opening the Starlink app, it said the dish might be tipped over and sure enough it was. That happened roughly a year ago however and hasn't happened since. Since I've been using Starlink since February of 2022, I've had plenty of time to see how it performs in brutal Wisconsin winters and so far it hasn't disappointed. Starlink by default automatically detects snow and will heat up to melt it off the dish. There's an option for preheat which will keep the dish warm to better resist snow buildup but it may consume more power. I haven't used that option yet as the automatic option has worked fine. I've had maybe one instance where I thought I should have used the preheat option. The weather had started off raining but cooled down throughout the day and the rain turned to ice. I don't think Starlink detected it soon enough and my internet was intermittent for a little while. I bought the ethernet adapter so I could set up a mesh network in my house and have a third party router upstairs and downstairs. The adapter just plugs into where the port that the dish cable plugs into. Then you plug the dish cable into the adapter. From the adapter you can plug in an ethernet cable and run it to your own router. Once you do that you go to the Starlink app and switch on the option for bypass mode. This bypasses the Starlink router and uses your own router. When you go through bypass mode you do lose a couple functions of the app such as seeing who's all on your network and setting up a sleep schedule for your Starlink. At the time I switched over to my own router, Starlink didn't offer a mesh network setup. They do now, however. It does seem that the range on the Starlink router by itself isn't great. I had used the Starlink router for about a month before I purchased a couple Eero routers. I noticed an improvement in range even when having just one Eero router on versus the range on the Starlink router. Over the past year, I've noticed speed can vary by quite a bit, but I would say download speed is consistently around or over 40 megabytes a second. I've had it as high as 210 megabytes a second, and then there are a few times, for whatever reasons, the speed goes below 10. When the speed is that slow, it's usually not that way for very long, and is fairly rare that it's been that slow. I was one of the first people in my area to get Starlink, and since then, there have been several other houses that have gotten it. I did notice a drop in speed from when I first had it to now. Even though the speeds may have dropped some, I haven't had an issue with TV shows buffering or notice slow speeds when searching the web. Yeah. Where I work, our internet speed is 300 megabytes a second. So surprisingly, when I come home to Starlink, I don't notice much of a difference in speed. We have multiple people on Starlink at my household and the speeds are enough where we don't see it as an issue. One of the reasons I wanted to wait for Starlink instead of going with Viasat or HughesNet was because Starlink could provide low latency internet. This would allow me to online game, which is something I couldn't do on the other satellite internet providers. Typically, I just play Warzone online. Again, I haven't had much for issues with this. Latency seems to fall within 40 to 70 milliseconds. 
I'd like to see that number a little bit lower, but as I have no other options for internet, I'm more than okay with this. I do notice some lag issues occasionally. Sometimes I have to shut down my PS5 and that seems to work. Other times I have to restart my routers and that works. Not sure I can really blame those issues on Starlink, but it seems that I have had more lag issues with Starlink than with regular broadband. Now I have had two bigger disappointments with Starlink. One of the disappointments was I had an issue with the cable that runs from the router to the dish. After having Starlink for about 11 months, the internet quit working and in the app it just said that Starlink was disconnected. I tried resetting and unplugging my routers, that didn't work. I reset the Starlink router to factory settings and still it wouldn't come back online. I tried contacting support, which would be the second big disappointment with Starlink, to see if they could help troubleshoot. The only way to reach support is to message them through the app. After a couple days of no internet and no response and searching online to what the possible problem might be, I decided to order another cable. Fortunately, it only took about two to three days for the cable to arrive versus their estimated lead time of a couple weeks. I got the cable and hooked up the dish and I was back in business. Not sure why the cable failed. I hadn't touched or moved the cable in those 11 months. I read online that the snow melt feature of the dish could possibly be the culprit for why some of the cables are failing, but not sure if that's accurate. As for customer service, it took them 18 days to respond, at which point, since I was back online, they basically just said, it looks like your Starlink is running as expected and closed the work ticket. I was pretty disappointed in that and at that point was just just hoping I would never have that issue again, but I had that same exact issue about three months later. I took the same troubleshooting steps as last time, but still the same result with no internet. I contacted customer service again, fully expecting not to hear back. After I sent them a message, I started shopping for a new cable, and to my surprise, within five minutes, I got a response. They stated my Starlink was signaling a poor ethernet connection alert, and they ordered me a new cable at no charge. I'm thinking this message was auto-generated, but nonetheless I received a new cable in about three days, despite the lead time again saying it'd be about two weeks. Just like last time, everything worked once I had the new cable installed. Also need to mention both times I inspected the cable for kinks or cuts, and other than a few small kinks where the cable bends, I didn't notice anything major. Since Starlink uses its own proprietary cable, the only way to get a replacement is through them or purchase a used one. It was an inconvenience with having no internet, but if I was a business that relied on having Starlink, I'm not sure what I would have done in that situation as there are no alternatives in my area. Obviously their customer support could use some improvement, but I'm guessing it's just due to worker shortage issues and they're trying to work through it. I just want to briefly cover a few more things before wrapping this up. First, the price. Right now it's $120 a month plus $600 for the hardware. When I first bought it, it was $99 a month plus $500 for the hardware. In the past 12 months, there's been two price increases. Each time was about $10. For me, since I don't have any other options for internet, it's worth that price. One thing to keep in mind is that Starlink says eventually your Starlink kit will become obsolete and will need to be replaced for optimal services. And finally, Starlink this past winter had announced data caps where your speed would be deprioritized if you went over one terabyte in a month, which I probably would have been fine as it looks like I go through a little over 500 gigabytes in a month. You could buy more data. I believe it was for about 25 cents a gigabyte. Thankfully, they recently announced they're doing away with that and there are no data caps for standard household plans. Hopefully in the future, they don't change their mind again and implement data caps as it could be an issue for people with larger households. Overall, I would say I'm pretty happy with Starlink. Setting it up is simple. The speeds are great for my needs and the low latency makes online gaming possible. I'm glad you're able to use your own routers if you prefer. The cable and customer support still need some working on. If you live in an area with little choice for internet providers, I'd highly recommend Starlink. It's not perfect, no internet provider is, but overall, I think it provides a good experience. Thanks for watching another review. Please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks again.